What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am answering your questions. I am going over tips, hacks, insights, anything you guys wanted to know about reselling. I recently put out a story question on my Instagram asking what you guys needed help with and you did not disappoint. You brought the best questions and I'm so excited to jump into these. If you are new to my channel, I'm a Canadian reseller. I am a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and I love to sell used clothes. It is my jam here on YouTube and I share everything about my business, hopefully helping you guys grow your own side hustle reselling clothing. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little quick update. I did go to the doctor this week and I have had croup for four weeks. It is only contagious for the first five days. I am not contagious. It's why I haven't been able to kick it. So they put me on some medications, some steroids. It's making me a little like jittery. I don't know if you've ever been on them. So I apologize, but I had to record this video. I had to put out content. You're just going to deal with tab flying at Mach 2. Okay. That's, that's just where we're at today. All right. First two things I want to address because to me, these are Poshmark hacks. These are reseller hacks. These are things that I'm figuring out over the last few weeks. First is the Magiscriptor hack. If you do not have Magiscriptor, you need to go down into my link download the app, try it out. I have a referral code down there. Really appreciate it if you drop that code in. Mike from Magiscriptor and myself have been playing around with the tone and directing the AI for optimized descriptions. So sometimes he'll send me this and he'll be like, try this, what do you think? And I'm like, uh, this is what I would change. So today I was like, okay, I'm gonna tweak some of these suggestions he's been sending. And I think I've had a breakthrough moment. Seriously, I am going to add the phrase down below. When you're in Magiscriptor, there's like the title that you're searching and then there's the tone. And I think it's like sales, witty, professional, blah, 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 whatever. You can add a whole phrase there. And I'm going to tell you the phrase that I'm using. I do encourage you to tweak it if you think you have better ideas. If you do tweak it and you find this like amazing phrase that's working well please drop it in the comments and share with us because you know I'm all about sharing with each other and helping us all improve our businesses this is what I am using are you guys ready you can take notes you can go down in the description copy it you're gonna use generate full description using relevant Poshmark trending keywords comma sales so that's the phrase. I know when you look, they only have like single word tones, but you can put whatever you want. You literally can use whatever you want. And uh, I encourage you to try this. Now in the title, I will put brand, style, color, material content, any style keywords, and the size. Uh, I will separate them all with commas. Previously, I wasn't, but I have been playing around with that more. If it's like, like phrases, like the brand and the style I'll have as one, then the comma, the material content, comma, color, comma, um, style keywords, commas, a uh, size, small, comma, you get what I'm saying. I just feel like I have to spell this out for you guys so that it's clear so that you can apply this and hopefully get similar results. Now, here is the process I use. I will go into Poshmark, I will upload the photos, and I will type out the title. I'm pretty much following this layout for typing out my titles. Then I will copy that title into Magiscriptor. And I may add in some other keywords. A lot of times, if there's like style tags that Poshmark has been using or recommending, I will put them in there. Um, if it was like bell sleeve or button down or like fur trim, I don't know. I'm just giving like random suggestions. But those kind of things, I would also comma and add in. You do have a max 80 characters, so pick and choose what you think is most important. That's what I'm following. This is the process I did, and I'm gonna read the description to you guys because this is probably one of the best descriptions I've had pop out. And I think I put like 10 or 12 listings out this afternoon. This is what came up. The title read, Aritzia Wilfred Tan Quartetta Turtleneck Sweater Size Extra Small. Uh, that's pretty much, I think, what I used. When I copied it in, I did put Vanilla Girl and maybe neutral? No, I think I just added Vanilla Girl into it. So here is the description it popped out. The Aritzia Wilfred Tan Quartetta Turtleneck Sweater is the perfect addition to your spring wardrobe. Crafted with luxuriously soft material and a timeless turtleneck design, this sweater will keep you warm and stylish all season long. Ah, 
I love this. It's Vanilla Girl Shade. Looks great with any outfit, making it an essential for the fashionable woman. Ugh. Yes, I love it. I'm loving this. This piece is available in size extra small for a perfectly tailored fit. Uh, get your hands on this luxurious sweater and upgrade your style today. And then it does have some tag words. It did Aritzia Wilfred tan quartetta turtleneck sweater, vanilla girl, size extra small. And I did have to add crop because I didn't put crop into the title and I knew it wouldn't know that to put it into the description. So I added that in after and like boom <laughs> that's the description i think this is so stinking easy the only thing you have to craft is the title and add one or two keywords that is it copy paste rinse repeat keep applying it to the listings that you're doing i am now using magiscriptor for all the listings except for lulu pieces and i may start sampling it for lulu pieces as well uh, letting go of my old ways and the descriptions that i was using before was hard, I'm gonna admit it. I feel like I'm a good description writer, but I've been trusting the science behind the AI and the SEO optimized description generator. And honestly, it's been a game changer. So when people come to me and they're like, why do you think you're getting all these sales? Why do you think you're, you know, your closet is so successful right now? And there's like so many factors, but this is one of them. This is definitely one of the tools that I am using on the regular. It saves me time listing. It gives me SEO optimized listings. Like the AI technology knows what Google wants. And I've been hearing from lots of people that are saying the same thing. They're like, wow, I changed the description on an old listing and bam, it sold within a week. So I do think there's science behind it. That's just my two cents. If you want proof, you can watch my what sold videos because I've been talking about these tools in my what sold videos. I would also encourage you to go to my Poshmark closet, which I have linked down below and click through my solds, look through my listings, read my descriptions, check out how I'm creating them. I'm using Magiscriptor for most of them, I promise. So I do think that it is having a positive impact on my business. And I wanted to share this because I feel like it's a new hack and I, I hope it works for you as well. Okay, next update. Uh, I wanted to share this. Uh, I have some soon to come features for Posh Sidekick. And I also have a coupon code for all of you that have signed up and support and watch my videos. So first, I'm going to go over the new features. I do have to add this and I've been meaning to say this more often. If you haven't joined Sidekick's Facebook group, please head over to Facebook, look up Posh Sidekick, join their Facebook group. You do have to have a profile set up with the app. They are checking. I think there's a lot of really good information shared within the group and Michael is always sharing anything new there as well and looking for feedback. So it's a way for you to have input in the app and help develop new features that you want to see. So lots of info has been shared. People have been providing feedback and these are some of the new features that are going to be tested really soon. Number one, do not send offer to newly listed items up to X amount days. I think this is great. Lots of people don't want to send, you know, aggressive offers out to new listings. Maybe they're running a weekend sale, you know, 30 or 40% off, but they don't want it sent out to anything that they just listed. That's a cool one. I like that one. Do not send offers on items that have less than X amount of likes. I think that's a good one too. I don't think I'll personally use it, but I think some people may use it because they like to build up the likes before they send out an offer because then when it sends out an offer, it like targets people and lets them know that this offer was sent out to multiple people. So if they want to take advantage, it kind of like encourages them to take advantage quicker. Do not send offer on items lower than X price. I think that could be used instead of the minimum profit set. It just kind of like makes it a little bit easier without having to do the math. So good new feature. Do not send offer on item above X price. I like that because that means your designer, your high ticket items, the ones that you're like, I'm standing firmly on the price that I set, they won't send offers on. So that's good too. If you're selling like a mix and you have a bunch of designer stuff, you still have the power to go into the app and send an offer to these people. But again, if you're running, you know, an aggressive sale and you don't want that offer going to your designer pieces, this will be for you. And then last one, show up to five days of future relist. So that's giving you five days of which items are going to be relisted. You can hop into Poshmark, change the price if you want, adjust the description, 
whatever you want. This is your chance to see what's going to be happening. I just want to say, you guys spoke up, you guys gave feedback to Sidekick, and Mike is working through the requests and doing his best to prioritize them and come out. If you're a Sidekick user, you're in the Facebook group, just give his posts a like, let him know he's doing a good job, because honestly, I think he's doing a fantastic job right now. Now for the coupon code. And first off, I want to address this. Someone said recently that I sound like a saleswoman now, that I'm always promoting these products. Number one, you do not have to download anything I suggest. You do not have to try it. You do not have to pay for it. That is your choice, okay? I am an affiliate for Magiscriptor and Posh Sidekick, but I only promote products that I stand behind, that I use personally, and that I have success with. If, if it wasn't working for me, I wouldn't be using it. I would find something else. Like, that is the honest truth. I'm a businesswoman, okay? I... I am not using stuff that doesn't better my business and save me time. I do need to stipulate, I am also receiving a small kickback for anyone that signs up. Yes, I'm an affiliate, that's how it works. But to be honest, I feel like I should be compensated for sharing or talking about a product that I think brings value. And I do share lots of things that I don't have affiliation for or that I don't get any kickbacks for, but I'm always like super appreciative when a company will work with me and I can get paid for promotion. This is my business. This is what I do. This is a part of my reselling business. If someone's willing to work with me, uh, take my advice on their application or their software, let me have a hand in the development, plus pay me a little, I'm down. I'm down. And I am like putting in everything you guys suggest, anything that I think will benefit us, I'm trying to get add into, added into these apps. So when you sign up for these apps, you are signing up for a product that I support and stand by and am working on weekly to improve for all of you and myself, right? Win-win, it's both a win. Okay, so the coupon code that I wanted to share is for 20% off your next month. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through this. So you have to go to your payment section in the app and down below when you scroll down, there should be an area where it says you can apply a coupon. The coupon code is TABS20, all in caps, T-A-B-S 20. That's it, apply it, you're saving 20% on the next build month. I wanna thank Posh Sidekick for doing this. They reached out to me and said it and uh, they are beyond grateful for everyone that has joined up recently and has joined the team. If you are still on the fence, I do talk about both of these apps in my last What Solds. That's where you're gonna get the proof of what I'm doing, what's working, the sales that I'm getting. And uh, yeah, they just have a positive impact. Also, I have to add this, Michael told me that if you haven't signed up already, you will be able to sign up get the free week, plus add this 20% coupon code on top of that. Okay, had to throw it out there. You can stack coupons here, which is awesome. I love that. We're all cheapskates, right? We're all couponers. Okay, now let's get to the questions from the viewers. Those are my two hacks. Those are what is new, what's going on. I wanted to talk about that, but um, I have some pretty good questions that you guys submitted. So Chelsea and Rachel both asked for tips or advice for new eBay users. I love this. I think this is going to warrant its own video. And I've kind of been tiptoeing around it. To be honest, eBay scares me. I don't feel like I know everything and I don't ever want to give you guys the wrong information as well. People will rip me limb by limb <laughs> for giving false info. So I'm very hesitant to give info on things that I don't feel like I know everything about. But I'm going to put together a video for next Wednesday where I share everything that's working for me and what I'm currently doing. And then hopefully that'll help you if you're trying to set it up. I think your first step is to go to eBay and set up an account. You don't need a business. I ran my eBay account for two years before I switched to a business one. So you do not need to get a starter business. You can do sales without it. I personally do have a business account, but it charges me, I think, $26 Canadian a month. So I think it's 20 USD, but it converts into $26. Just want to throw that out there. The first step is signing up, and then your next step will be waiting for my video next Wednesday. Uh, sorry, I couldn't answer this short today. Okay, guys. All right, next question is from Katie, and Katie asked, vintage oversized sweaters, list in men's or women's? 
And I like this question because I do list a lot of vintage sweaters. They are like a bread and butter for me. And I do have an answer for this. So for me, if the item, okay, let's look at it this way. And it may be different in posh US. So take this as a grain of salt, take this with a grain of salt, whatever the saying is, you guys know what I mean. The men's Poshmark side has a much smaller demographic shopping it. It has a much smaller audience. So unless the item is like really oversized, like definitely men's probably wouldn't fit a woman. Um, for me, that would be like a men's XL or bigger. I will listen men's. If it is a men's size large or smaller, I will usually roll up one sleeve or show in the you know, cover photo that you can roll a sleeve. And I will state that this is a men's size. It may be like an oversized large, depends. Because a lot of vintage stuff actually sizes small as well. But I feel like in the Canadian side of Poshmark, we have access to a larger women's audience. And that's why I list them into women's. Even if it's a men's item, unless it's like a men's Patagonia or North Face or like some sort of branded thing. But if it's a vintage knit sweater, I do commonly list them into women's and I don't do copy listing and list into two places. I know some people do that. I just find that's a whole lot of work. I got to keep track of it. I got to delete the listing. I just put it in one place and I still get sales with them. So I feel like what I'm doing is working. The tips for that are include measurements. If you're not listing it in the right gender, you should probably include measurements. Also state that it is a men's size large and then how you think the fit is. Okay, that's my, that's my answer. Hope it helps you, Katie. I hope it helps you sort out some of your listings. And if anyone else has had questions about sizing, that's how I do it. Paradigm, I don't know how to say this word. Paradigm Thrift YYC asked resources for current styles. And I love this one. So I use Posh Trends often. I also Google fashion trends for spring 2023 or whatever season we're going to be heading into. I like to watch influencer videos. I don't have like any per se that are my go-to. I usually just pick the ones with the top views. So I would recommend doing a YouTube search and um, they should give you suggested videos. They should be good suggested videos that are relevant to what you want. I also do a good amount of comp searching. You guys know this, I talk about it all the time. I research and sold, I have a good idea what's selling. This really helps with that. I believe knowledge is power, especially when sourcing right now. I have been in times where I just buy like whatever I want, but 2023 is a different type of sourcing for my business. If you have brands you commonly source, find and sell, uh, you should be a part of their email list. Highly, highly recommend this. You'll know what's current trending by the emails. You'll also know um, what's coming out for their next season because usually they're sending out their emails, you know, before the next season starts. This is what's going to be hitting the stores. This is where I get a lot of my spring trends. You can also go to the mall, go like in store, pay attention to the styles, the colors, the fits, the aesthetics. And if you are unsure, I would use Google Lens on the items or search the item on Google and usually it'll pull up like, I don't know, say you're in H&M, you see these tops. Usually when you pull it up and you go down to the description for the item, they're going to have applicable keywords put into their description. They should. That's how they optimize their SEO search for the items when you're on their website or you're searching online. So I do think you can get a lot of information from retailers really truly between youtube influencers and retailers they kind of fill in the gaps and then comp searching and things like that but comp searching can be tough it's not a be all end all if i like want a specific item i do often filter by price for sure or i won't look at anything under 25 dollars because 99 percent of the time it won't be what i'm looking for so yeah i hope that helps you uh, a find for you, and this is the last question, asked, what are my thoughts on how live sales are lowering comps? Should Posh say sold on a live or just sold? And uh, I think this is another loaded question. Again, these are just my own thoughts and opinions. Um, everyone else can have, you know, individual thoughts and experiences, but I do think that live sales are affecting comp prices for sure. 
they are popping up when you search items. Uh, buyers are starting to expect crazy deals. I actually prefer when people do a live show and they do quick ad and they don't even put the brand because no matter what they sell, buyers don't know what the brand was or what it was sold for. Um, when people put like the brand or the style into their quick lists, those will pop up in your comp searching. I made a decision two months ago, and this is my fix, is that I am no longer competing with live shows. I'm not competing with the products that they're selling. I am now sourcing higher ASP items and the items that aren't commonly sold in live shows. So for example, I do find Aritzia is sold in live shows, but a lot of times they're older styles. Like they're, they may not be styles that I would pay like 10 or $12 for at the thrift store, right? I'm typically only sourcing newer items that are like four years or newer. I will pick up some others if they meet multiple factors, but generally that is my rule of thumb, the newer, the better. Here's my side note to anyone that's uh, selling a two-year current Babaton item that's worth $150 for 10 to 15 is just foolish in my eyes, to be honest. I would say offload all your old styles and lives, but your like current top value items, post those, like list them as traditional. You will make more money. They will sell equally fast. I still, if it's a desirable item, a high value current piece, it will usually sell within two to three weeks for me and I will get a much higher ROI on it. So if you're selling it for 15, I could probably sell it for 75. I just like no judging and just giving ideas. You know what I mean? If you have any current style stuff that has a high retail value, I would try listing it in your closet first and try and sell it because you'll make more money. I just want you guys to make more money. That's all I want. Um, but absolutely, I do think that they're having effect on that. But the items that I am now selling, my buyers won't find these in live shows. So I'm just not in that. I'm not competing with live shows anymore. I hope that helps. Now, as for should Posh say sold on a live or just sold? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there needs to be something separating them. But um, Posh doesn't listen to me. They they don't care. Um, I feel like they don't listen to a lot of us because this has been put out there so many times. All I hope is that someone at head office maybe hopefully watches my videos and takes some dang notes. Take some notes, gosh darn it, and take them to your meetings because we are giving you guys like constructive criticism here. But yeah, I do wish that they would separate those solds and uh, I, I like it when people do live shows and do quick list and just number them and then just talk about them. And I think that's where those runner pass shows have been really good because people are entering the information really quick. And I find a lot of those aren't popping up into the comp searching. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's a work in progress. Um, I mean, we've been doing this for since October. I would hope that we were sorting things out. It's just a really slow uphill battle right now with um, their software design. So yeah, hopefully they separate that in the future. But those are my thoughts. Okay, what do you guys think? Is there anything in this video that you wanna add your two cents, your thoughts, your experience, um, any pro tips that you guys have, please share below. This is how we grow as a community and become better resellers. All right, guys, if this video has helped you in any way in your reselling business, make sure to give me a thumbs up and also tap subscribe on your way out. I am wishing you guys so many sales. Thank you for supporting my channel and I will see you next time. Bye. Hopefully help you grow a side. Hopefully helping you grow your own side hustle reset. Re Hopefully helping you grow your own. Oh my. <laughs> my brain is mush today. Okay. Oh my gosh, every time I record, I get the burps. It's like I don't breathe and then I get these like burp buildups.